little bit about the history and when you guys set up the Bercy Day Care Centre. Okay, uh, interesting question today because we're just 18 years, our, our birthday was last Friday of the 18th year. Um, the history of it actually is that this belongs and is owned by people of the Ndorka North Lard. Every penny, every penny that built this place was raised within that area, this North Lard area, including Dundalk. Uh, 450,000 at the time, as I understand, and it was built by the people of the Ndorka for the people of the Ndorka and North Lard 18 years ago. And it still stands the test of time. We have over the week, we have about 50 different people, 15 every day. That's that's the that's the kind of limit that in terms of in terms of health and safety and so forth. Um, but over the week, we would have 50 different people, and we would actually have more now because we actually open on a Saturday, so we would have about 60 different people throughout the week coming from the Dundalk and district area, including right out, right out the mountain area. People do all sorts of activities from music, dance, art, crafts, um, and as you just noticed, people are just coming back from a, from a bus outing. On a Wednesday usually, uh, providing the weather is in it, uh, we would go out on a bus tour uh, to different, different places within the area, um, and as always, two or three members of staff would go with them and David, uh, David our, our bus driver, handyman, everything yeah. and, and David's always there with them. There is um, 50,000 people in this country diagnosed with Alzheimer's and that's the people who are diagnosed. There might be another, well there is, there's plenty more that hasn't been diagnosed. There's 1,200 in Loud. 1,200. That's an amazing amount of people. We have a waiting list here. We would love to take more people, but as I was saying earlier, health and safety wouldn't allow us to do so. But um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disease that's actually on the increase by the day, never mind by the week. And it's the biggest fear, that's actually, the research has shown that us all, the, one of the biggest fears we have is getting Alzheimer's. Um, and only for this centre, it's nearly like an oasis in the desert, this centre, because not only do you have people uh, come here during the day, but if they weren't coming here during the day, the only other place they could go to is a residential care centre. And most people's loved ones want to keep them as long as possible at home with them. That's where they want to be. I mean, we all want to. Where do we actually want to be? We want to be at home. Even if we go on the most exotic holiday, we want to get back to our own bed sometimes, don't we? Yeah. There's no place like home. So this actually place here, the Birches, keeps people at home as long as possible. Excellent. And if it, if it wasn't here, people would be in residential. Now, they're very good residential homes. That's not criticizing residential homes. There, there are very, very good ones in the area. We're very fortunate in that is. But people do want to keep their loved ones at home. And this centre here helps to do that. Excellent. I'm sure one of the kind of... The extra benefit of this also gives the carers just a little bit of respite as well. Exactly, exactly, Stephen. And and but the respite is just so so important to the carer yeah. because I mean this is actually this is twenty four seven, fifty and multiplied by fifty two, and it is a tough tough journey for both the person with Alzheimer's, but it's an even tougher one for the carer. It really is, because there we are. I call it the Robin disease. It robs the person of everything. And people just think it's actually it's a memory issue. It's just not a memory issue. Sometimes the memory part of it is the easy part, because you can make up for your loved one's loss of memory by just keeping the memory. You can keep the memories going yourself. Yes. But it's all the others. It's, it's the loss of, of who they are. It's the loss of the, you mean, it gets to a stage at the end stage that the person doesn't know who they are, doesn't doesn't know who the surroundings, doesn't know who to take, doesn't know how to take care of themselves. So every aspect of their life they depend on other people. The emotional intelligence stays there the longest, and they will never forget who who you might forget what the relationship was, but they don't forget that you that you are their loved one. And, and never forget kindness and never forget your voice 
and that's really, really important. And one of the things that actually sort of, and that's why it was so, so important that the likes of what you're doing, Stephen, and, 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 your fellow, and your fellow group is really important to us because that actually helps us to keep people at home, helps us to keep this place running. We have to fundraise 59% of the running costs, and that includes staff, of all the running costs. We have to raise 59% of it this year, which is a significant amount of money. It's over 100,000. So you can just imagine last January 1st, we were over 100,000 in the red okay. as a group. And we're all volunteers. And all the volunteers from day one, if anybody agrees to be a volunteer for us here in the Birches, the objective is, and, and, and they're quite clearly told right up front, there's no expenses. You mean this, yeah. this, is going to, this is going to cost you. Yeah. It's not only is it going to cost you time, but we don't, we don't pay anybody for their out-of-pocket expenses. If we go on an outing, uh, if we go on a meal with the staff, we pay for ourselves. So there's no money, no money at all. So every penny you raise for us will go towards our loved ones here. We have, we have a walk out on the mountain uh, on the 20, Sunday week. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, and we do that every year as well. Uh, and one of the things about the centre, we don't have to advertise at all within the area. There's so many people know about. You've only got to mention the Birches, and actually people know it's an Alzheimer's centre. You don't have to usually even use the word Alzheimer. It's um, so it's um, it's held in such high esteem within this area, um, and people know. And that if they leave their loved ones here, they're going to be taken care of, they're going to be loved, they're actually going to be as if they were their own family. So nobody has to fear, and nobody does fear, about leaving their loved ones here because they know that this is, this is such a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, you mean I've had personal experience of it myself, so good word, passionate. People are really passionate. They don't, you mean, you talk to any of the staff here, none of them sees it as a job. It's a way of life, and, and, and you can see just the love, the care, and the kindness just oozes out of them. And anybody that comes here at all, uh, you mean comes visiting, or people who come to have a check it out because maybe the loved one is going to come here, they always walk out and say, what a lovely, lovely atmosphere it is here. Nice. Yeah, it, it is a homely, uh, nobody stands on ceremony, Come in, you're welcome. It's, there is a, there, you mean that old saying, a welcome on the mat. There is literally, literally a welcome on the mat here. What advice would you give to somebody who maybe is, someone who experienced maybe some Alzheimer's symptoms themselves, or maybe it's a family member or a friend? What advice would you give them to someone who's been through that before? It is an interesting question, Stephen. One of the things I would be saying to people is keep in the gym. Yeah. Keep fit, yeah. keep active and keep within that social circle. It is really, really important to stay as active, to stay as fit, to stay within the social circle, to keep communicating uh, and stay within, you mean, don't isolate yourself. Well, loneliness, they, they reckon any of that actually, apart from Alzheimer's, they reckon loneliness is going to be the disease of the 21st century because people are retreating into, because we're not as much as a community as we, as we used to be, but we are very fortunate here. The community here is brilliant. So I would be, I would be really advertising your work and your center for people and encourage people. If they know anybody, if your members know anybody, uh, that has a family member with Alzheimer's, it would be really, really encouraging for them to come along, maybe on a Monday morning when you're not busy or whatever the case may be, to stay as fit and active as possible. Uh, and that's why the, there's here, there's dance, and there's mu people love music. One of the things that, uh, the last thing that actually goes with people is the long-term memory. So they will remember the old film, they will remember the old music, they will actually remember the old song. You can actually go out there uh, at some days when there's a, we have uh, very, very fortunate, we have somebody comes down from the, um, from the, the Arts Council and have a sing song here once a month. And I'm not joking, Every, she only needs to speak the first two notes and people are awake. And one of the things as well is really important that it, this is not doom and gloom here. 
This is fun. This is, this is people having laughter. This is not laughing at each other, but they're laughing with each other. Uh, and and it, is, it is really uh, an uplifting center for people to come to.